time to talk about lag. Hey everyone, I'm Kirsten, but if you want to be BFFs, you can call me Kay, and I make videos weekly on digital planning, productivity, and getting creative digitally. Going digital has its drawbacks though, like lag, so hopefully this video will help in reducing or eliminating lag in your digital planners, products, or notebooks. This video will likely be more helpful to digital planner creators, so if you're someone who just purchased a digital planner that's really laggy, this video likely won't solve that problem 100%, but I will offer suggestions for reducing that lag. I also plan on organizing this video into kind of a hierarchy, so I recommend starting with the first choice I chat about in this video, see if that reduces the lag and helps that problem, and if not, move on to the second step, the third step, and the fourth step. This is because I'm going to arrange the video in a way that the first method that I talk about is going to be the most cost effective and the most time effective, whereas the last choice, while it does offer 100% guaranteed lag-free experience, it's very costly and very time inefficient. So try the first method, try the second method, then try the third before opting for the last method. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can see more content from me. And it really does help me out. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, first, why is there even lag in the first place? I always test out my digital planners on the computer before airdropping them to my iPad to test out. And I never see this lag on my computer, but I almost always see this lag on my iPad without doing any of the methods I'm going to talk about in today's video. I find that these iPad note taking and planning apps actually use something called the iOS PDF rendering engine, which is basically a more compact way of loading and processing these PDF files, which ends up actually being a sore spot for us who uses these really elaborate PDF files that have a lot of beautiful textures and images and this kind of planner like setup. All right, so how do we actually fix this? So the first step I recommend is simply just uploading your PDF file to a free website like smallpdf.com or if you have Adobe software, you can do this in Adobe. Try and cut down on that file size. It'll upload your PDF to this website and it'll reduce your file size to something like 20 megabytes to five megabytes. A lot of times this will reduce the lag in GoodNotes and this is really the only step you can take if you've simply purchased a really laggy digital planner. However, if you've tried that and you still have quite a bit of lag in your planner, I recommend trying method two. So if you're the creator of the digital planner, you have the ability to head back to the program that you use to create the planner in. So for me, that's Keynote. You'll need your computer to do this if you're using Keynote like I am. So in Keynote, you wanna head back to your planner that's causing that lag, and you wanna make sure that the document is actually sized to US letter. So this may mean that you need to kind of move things around, change things up to get it the size that you want within the US letter format. Then you wanna head over to the file option and scroll down to reduce file size. And then after that, you can export to PDF and test it out on your computer and later your iPad. So this worked for about 10% of the products in my shop. However, if you have very realistic, very pretty, lots of shadows, lots of colors, lots of images within your digital planners, this may not work for you. This may not be the best method for you. So that's when method number three comes in. So method number three, I recommend flattening the planner pages into images. So in Keynote right now, all of my elements are editable and movable so I can move things around, change things how I want. So you'll want to flatten those babies into images. So you have one whole kind of uneditable piece. And then you're actually going to rebuild the links to your planner on top of that image. Unfortunately, you won't be able to use master slides to cut down on the time it takes to do this, but I found this to be super quick just by using copy paste. After that, you will repeat the previous method of just going to file, reduce file size, and then exporting as a PDF. And this has worked for me for just about all of my super laggy planner files. If you're in the most unfortunate situation where method three doesn't work, then you can opt for method four. Method four is the most time inefficient and costly, especially if you don't have the Adobe suite or any experience working in Adobe. This method does guarantee 100% lag, at least when I've done this method countless times. And so again, this could be a great option for you if methods one through three didn't work. If you made your planner in Keynote, you can flatten them as images and essentially repeat method three, but just in Adobe InDesign. So building those links on top of those planner images. Alternatively, you can build your planner pages directly in Adobe InDesign. Nothing against Adobe InDesign though, I just find it to be very costly, very time inefficient, not very accessible, and that's just really not my thing. 
But again, you can get 100% guaranteed lag-free planners by using Adobe InDesign. So those are the best ways to reducing and eliminating lag in these PDF files, digital planners, and notebooks that has seen a huge uptick, especially in GoodNotes users. If you want more detailed walkthroughs or tutorials, kind of seeing each method step by step, that's what my How to Create Digital Products course is for. I'm actually creating a whole module on making sure that all of the products that you create are lag free. So be sure to enroll in that course now to lock in its lowest price because the price will go up once that module is added. I'll be sure to leave details about the course in the description below for anyone who may be interested in checking it out. As always, thank you so much for sticking with me through the end of this video. It really does mean a lot to me and I appreciate it so much. Again, please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel and this is the first video you're seeing of me and I will see you in my next video.